Welcome, welcome. Um, we're going to start chapter 22, which is condensations and alpha substitutions of carbonyls. The last chapter we'll cover for organic chemistry. So, looking at the, uh, these two major types of reactions. So, let's first break down what they are. Alpha substitution involves so alpha substitution it involves the the replacement replacement of an H a hydrogen adjacent to a uh, replacing the the hydrogen adjacent to the carbonyl, saying that the this particular H is incredibly acidic, all things considered. So of this carbonyl, this is the alpha position, saying that alpha substitution is we're having some sort of base tack here to form what's called an enolate ion. Enolate. Now, now what is actually going on? So what this is going on, losing this, this is a reversible reaction. Reversible reaction. So what we form is this intermediate. Now, why it's called enolate is because we can resonate between this, this swings down, swings up, we have a alkene oxide. Now from this, we can see an electrophile replacing this position. to form a, we form our ketone. Let's hope, so we're seeing an alpha substitute, a substitution, alpha is the carbonyl, saying because of this resonance structure we see here, this is a very acidic proton, then more acidic than what we would expect. Most mm -hmm, carbon groups do not see the loss of protons. Typically our proton loss is limited to what? Like amines and alcohols and carboxylic acids. But there are a few key protons that can be lost, such as uh, what can be lost directly by base, such as uh, well, alkyne protons can be lost. Nitrile protons can be lost. But so that is an example of the alpha substitution. We will see a lot of that. The carbonyl. Uh, Carbonyl, uh, the carbonyl condensation reactions is what happens from the alpha substitution if the electrophile is another carbonyl group. So looking from that enolate, enolate intermediate, if we have another group, let's just put this as an aldehyde. We then attack here, picking this up. We're going to undergo this. We have so we have now then tap there all minus. Wait, sorry. Mm -mm -mm. So, so there's my carbon. 
there's my bounty here. So we have O minus one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And from there, we can pronate this guy to make an alcohol. Some sort of whether it's water, whether it's an alcohol, some sort of proton donor. Pronates that, so now we have our H. Now we have a carbonyl condensation. Okay, well, that, that's a carb plus an RO minus. Now, now this can do a lot of different things. Like, this doesn't have to necessarily form an alcohol like here, especially if you have a good leaving group. We can, for example, we, I mean, in some cases, we can lose we can lose this guy and see a beta hydride elimination or beta elimination to form a enone. In the case of if I'm attacking a ester, we can form a diketone like this. So let's keep on showing the, or should keep on showing our alpha substitution. So our hydrogen, we have a base attacking. This is reversible, but once we start going through the condensation mechanisms, it's not gonna really wanna go back. Tax here. So the glove pair swings back down, kick this off. And what we have here now is a diketone. diketone from this. Let's say now uh, the, this intermediate here is known as the so this uh, this intermediate here for this alpha substitution known as the ketoenol, undergoes what's called ketoenol tautomerization. That in acid and base, this can, uh, alpha ketone can tautomerize from a keto form to enol form and back. It's not quite a resonance structure in that it actually, you see the exchange of protons. So it's not just the, the electrons are shifting, it's an actual distinct form that it can stay for a period of time. So let's look at this in base catalyzed mechanism and acid catalyzed mechanism. So these are, a tautomer is not the same thing as an isomer in that it's switching back and forth, but it's not the same thing as a resonance structure because we're actually gonna see Uh, we're going to see a, a shifting, a rearrangement of atoms. So, undergo this. Resonating to the other side. 
minus, and then of water you form the keen all alkene alcohol keto enol ketone on the left enol on the right we generate our catalyst You can do the same thing from the acid catalyzed version. Acid catalyzed, once again, goes through its slightly different mechanism. The ketone. Awesome. Looking up there. Water then acting as our base. Here, just can flip up. But we can still undergo the same thing under acidic or basic conditions and reforming our catalyst. Same thing, different conditions, acidic or basic, just the basic, we attack the alpha position first, acidic, we are deactivating the ketone first. So what, what exactly is the definition of a tautomer? This tautomerization is an isomerization that occurs by proton migration. So essentially we're moving we're migrating the alpha hydrogen to the alcohol. <clears throat> so that alpha hydrogen is referred to, is called, is said to be enolizable. I mean, it can turn into the enol form. Now, this can actually result in a steric swap in chiral centers. Imagine if we have more than one alpha hydrogen. We could be shifting this around because it can, this is all reversible. We could go one way, go back the other. So, imagine, like, say, we're going through this. So we have a ketone. So right there, that is a chiral center. Going through arrow, arrow, forming, bromine, carbon, OH, and then going back, as it goes back, you can imagine that hydrogen adding either from the top or the bottom, reforming that as either R, uh, turning maybe just, okay, so that'd be one, 
which is bromine from the president's ketone. Bromine, ketone. So let's just say if this is pledge, and that's the dash. So that'd be S. So this would be S, and this is going to be would flip it. So this is actually going to be a meso R and S. You got to get a mixture of R and S as it, it equally attack from the top or bottom. Now, the pKa of the enol. So how likely is this acidic proton going to be deprotonated? Is approximately twenty units. So it is much much, much weaker than most acids, much, much weaker. But if you compare this to the alkane or most alkenes, alkane or alkenes, we're talking, these guys are usually greater than 40. But we're talking about these guys are significantly more acidic than alkane. If we talk about alkyne, which I mentioned earlier is another very acidic region, the pKa is approximate, is approximate is equal to 25. So the, the alpha hydrogen is more acidic than our alkyne. So just know like our pKa of water is water is 15.7 and our alcohols between 16 and 18. Water is typically more acidic than alcohol. Alcohol is more acidic than the alpha hydrogen. Alpha hydrogen is more acidic than alkynes. And alkynes are way more acidic than our alkanes. So we're not going to be able to depronate any methane, but this guy is particularly more reactive. But just to give you just to give you a scope, you're not going to just have like if you have an alcohol group, you're probably going to depronate that first, but in presence of the right conditions, we're going to see this reaction occurring. Now, uh, like uh, join a reaction diagram here. So normally when we look at the, the alpha substitution, this, uh, this keto enol form, this, this is intermediate. It's gonna, this is gonna lie heavily to the left right here. It's not going to want to stay here, but if you can force this to products by by adding that electrophile, this this reaction is going to give us it's going to force it right. It's not going to want to stay there. It's going to want to go back, and it's not going to want to stay there for long. But if we add a good enough electrophile we can force this to the right. And so again, this reversible reaction, while not heavily product favored, if you can push it over this hump onto products, you can get it to go with shocking regularity. Okay. 
Another uh, way to favor the enolate formation is by using a specialized base. So these guys are very usually very reversible in the presence of most bases. But if I use a very specialized base, this is called lithium diisopropyl amide. So what does this look like? This is what happens when you take, so you take a diisopropyl amine and you react with, you react with a lithium, a lithium catalyst. It's like a, a what's it? A butyl, a butane, lith, a butyl lithium. Uh, remember, these guys is organ, organolithiums and organometallics are very acidic. If you have an acidic group, they are going to depronate those acidic groups. You have to watch out. You normally want these, oh, attacking a carbonyl. But in the presence of acidic group, you're going to depronate it. So what do you form? You form butane. Butane is a gas. Butane is a gas. It flies away. So what do you have? Diisopropyl. Uh, amide. What's that? Amide. And then... Lithium. Di isopropyl. It's like the yeah, amide, which is essentially we would say that's a an amide. So lithium diisopropyl amide. A particularly strong base. Particularly strong base. And that the pronated version, this guy has a pKa of 40. So this guy won't react with our electrophiles. So a strong base, it's weak, it's a strong base, but a very weak nucleophile because of its bulkiness. The isopropyl groups will keep this from attacking carbonyls, keep it from further reacting. This is just going to be a bulky base tax the protons. Bulky base is a poor nucleophile, but a strong base. So essentially what's gonna happen, we are going to, we're gonna essentially, here. If I do this, if I say, this and I mix in our LDA. We're going to kind of favor formation of and we're going to have our isopropyl amine. And that's gonna float, that's gonna float off and not really react. It takes a really strong base to deprotonate that. Organolithium, organometallics, those are really strong bases. But we can deprotonate this, but so that's not gonna act as our nucleophile, it's not gonna allow this to go backwards. So then we can the store that around. So, <clears throat> so one of the main reactions we're going to see is alkylation of this enolate. So we're going to form an alkyl bond. Is this enolate is a particularly good nucleophile. It's a good nucleophile for for Rx. Remember we SN2. It's a this is a good SN2. 
new profile. So it's going to react with Rx and tosyl groups, tosylates. Which is our R O T S. And these are good leaving groups for them. We're going to kick out these these stable leaving groups. Now this enolate can either attack from the alpha carbon or from the oxygen, but the alpha carbon is far more common. So we can either attack from. Remember, we can go through the enol form. So we could either, so it's either from, so essentially this guy, is essentially looking like we have a resonance between somewhere within there. It could attack from that oxygen, it could attack from that carbon. It's typically gonna be attacking from that carbon. So let's just look at some reactions. Look at this in practice. So like, hey, I'm getting lazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit longer, change just Mix things up. LDA, mix that up. We're going to mix in then. Throw me. And what are we going to get? We're going to get oh, peroxide. Ran out of room. I'm going to substitute this. Now, this works fast if there's only one type of alpha hydrogen to avoid a mixture of products. So, so we don't want like say, like this where there's, this is alpha hydrogen and this is an alpha hydrogen. Or if, it, if we lose here, we're gonna get one type of product and we lose here, we're in a different type we want to keep only really one alpha hydrogen possible. Of course, you'd say, oh, well, the one way to keep there just one alpha hydrogen is by using aldehyde. Well, aldehyde will only have one alpha hydrogen. Well, aldehyde has some other react, some side reactions with lithium uh, diisopropyl imid. So aldehyde's not necessarily the best one to use for this. So now you can also do similar things with uh, enamines. So so formation. Enamines can be could have been formed. We kind of talked about this during the mean chapter. By it, whereas when you react a ketone, oh, yeah, uh, go back to my notation. You react a ketone with an amine. That so a, a secondary amine. So 
and age. So then essentially you form this unstable, really intermediate of R plus and like OH minus. So H minus attacks the alpha hydrogen, and we can see an enamine form. Essentially, yeah, what is an enamine? So enamine. Now this enamine undergoes the these this resonance structure that we can see here. There's our base structure of and this only occurs with secondary nitrogens. What oh, sorry, there's tertiary means there's this resonance too. from here. So the lone pair can donate down to here, kicking that down to there. So an enamine works the same way that we can have this reactive pin. So let's just look at it again. Essentially, any generic ketone with alpha hydrogen, so R, all prime, O, and our secondary amine, and H. I'll just have the same prime. I'm just saying these do not have to be the same groups. Are gonna react. Look at the actual and react to form R. No. by the similar mechanism that essentially first step first step the mechanism is this is going to swing down and attack that carbonyl this Then, reversibly, mind you, then reversibly, that's going to be pronated. Oh, oh. Well, it's going to be pronated from. Probably, probably this is going to attack here first. So it's going to make a stable intermediate. Alkylamine, alcoholamine. And this can be pronated and leave. We have a leaving group.
that could then that donates in to kick that out. And there's where we get our enamine. Now that enamine Enamine can then, well, actually, no, I'm not quite there yet. There, as it don't, it's in, that's, uh, kick that in. That's going through the, intermediate where we have the, as a nitrogen cation. From there, we depronate with our water. The alpha hydrogen, then we can form the enamine. Actually, that's probably now, it's probably pretty stable. I think that's there. Now these enamines are more reactive than the enol version, uh, more reactive than a basic enol, but less reactive than the enolate. So if we're talking about reactivity, you have OH, There's an enol followed by enamine. Followed by the strongest would of course be the enolate. versions. This guy is in the middle. This guy being obviously the strongest nucleophile. So, okay, look into that. But fortunately, these can be formed and the reactive under much milder conditions. We don't have to use strong of a base or whatever to form these guys. So that, that, that hydrolysis will convert this aminium ion to a ketone. Oh, oh, hydrolysis can convert this to a ketone later. So we don't need nearly as basic conditions to form these guys and get these guys to react. So for example, let's say I have, this is my enamine. This is a cyclohexene twice uh, with a pyridine. I have to remember, I can't, can never remember. But this, so that's a cyclic enamine, react that with benzyl bromide. That form our CH2. Medium, and then in the presence of acid, you can kick that back off and put that as a ketone. So, okay. 
that proves as a useful method of say, oh, it's a little bit too hard to, or too reactive to form this. Can we form this enamine first and then convert it to a ketone later? Yeah, a lot of times, yeah. We can do that and that's that's gonna serve us well. I think we'll do like one more reaction and then maybe one or maybe two more reactions we we'll call today. So one more reaction with enamine at least. And that's uh, the enamine alkylation known as the stork reaction. The stork, uh, this is known as the stork reaction. We use this to attack benzyl bromides or the benzyl halides. Often used to attack allylic. Halides. Use it to attack methyl halides and acyl halides. Let's just look hypothetically of uh, what this would look like on enamine. Let's Trying to figure out what type. Now, you know, mean to use. Hmm. Well, let's try that. See what the scene mean would look like on a. Uh, on this halide, shoot. Yeah. Okay. Transbutene. Yeah, transbutene. Trans two butene. So, and then attack. Here, take off that, and we're going to form what? One. And of course, if I add acid, off the medium form, phenone. Of course, those are very substantial very separated, so. Highly separated, no. But okay, so we're just looking at that. So, uh, I can also see the, let's see. We'll see. We're going to alpha halogenation of ketones. These can be formed from a variety of methods. Uh, well, they can be base promoted uh, alpha halogenation. So we're essentially 
we're like adding the halogen as electrophile. So, so let's look at this. Look at that. Add base for my enolate. And then we add in a halogen. This could be chlorine, this could be bromine, this could be iodine. And iodine. And the byproduct, of course, is then we've halogenated with the and we have a byproduct of water and our halide. The mechanism is pretty straightforward. It's basically from this position, this position, we're just using what we know. We've seen this mechanism before. We said this is going here, attacking here. That's acting as an electrophile, and it's a strong enough electrophile that it can pull this off. This is not like our electrophilic room addict substitution where we have to activate these things first. We have a strong region of electron density that can attack you. So now please note base here is, is base promoted. This is not base catalyzed. Base is actual reagent. We need the base to form the enol8. The base is not reformed in the end because uh, we are forming a halide in the end. So this is base promoted. Now, another problem is base promoted uh, will often add multiple times. So if long as there's, so there's right here, this is two alpha hydrogens. So once we have this structure, our keto halide, if we have excess base, another enolate. Which in the presence of the excess halo halogen, we're gonna dihalogenate. second halogenation is actually faster than the first. Let's try to reason this out. Why might the second halogenation be faster than the first? Well, halogens, remember, are electronegative. They are electron withdrawing. So what's going to be happening as you, as you add the first halogen is this is going to stabilize our enolate form that we're going to withdraw some of the electron density from this lone pair that's on the carbon, thus stabilizing it. It's going to be more stable than, than this guy up here, than the original one. And so we're going to add the second time. Now it's possible not as common to form a to use a halo form reaction in addition to add three halogens and this will create a very reluctant leaving group that will form a halo formant acid so just looking at this that's an alpha hydrogen and three hydroxides, three equivalents of halogen, we can form CX3, water, and three equivalents of halide. Now, this guy form a halo form. X3 in the presence of base. Here. So 
own pair swinging down to reform the ketone. Kicking that off, form a carboxylic acid. And this carboxylic acid can now pronate that and form a haliform. So that's a way to form, say, chloroform, for example, or if you did bromoform, so on and so forth. There's a haliform. Now, this is a uh, this is a method that that could be used to identify this haliform. It's a method that can be used to identify methyl ketones. This is called, there's a iodoform test. Iodoform test it finds methyl ketones. Forming forms a forms solid iota form, which would be but it can also detect secondary alcohols. But it can also uh, can also be used to uh, form acid from an alcohol. But so this is something the, the nurses actually in their, their principles of chemistry two test for. They need to say, oh, you mix uh, this in base, in base and iodine, uh, excess base and excess iodine. If you have here, it's like, see, no solid. And here, when I lose that group, you see solid. The way to test whether you have a methyl ketone. Because otherwise you can only add it as many times as you have hydrogens. Let's see. So, uh, we're going to look at the acid catalyzed halogenation real quick. So note, this is different from the base in that the base promoted, this is acid catalyzed. And this can be more readily controlled. We can add one or more halogens based on just simply the equivalence of halogens we add. This is not going to be spiral out of control the same way the base version was. So, because of the fact that we have to deactivate the ketone rather than activate the hydrogens, uh, activate the alpha carbon. So, like we can just add acetic acid. So HC2H3O2, acetic acid, a weak acid but acidic enough that we get to our keto enol we get to our keto enol group and of course then this can this is going to attack our halogens the alkene is going to add to the halogen Go through, form our intermediate.
OH. What is that kind of resonate to? Resonate to. Resonates between that and let's see. X. H. With a positive charge there. Going on the side. And then this halogen deprotonates this. Allows this to go, oh, swing back down, reform my ketone. And of course, makes uh, acid. So this can be used to add just because it completely utilizes. Well, no, it makes our acid. So this one, because it has to deactivate this form enol. That essentially that uh, deactivates this to form e, the enol before it adds. This is not necessarily the most stable version. So this is going to only add for as much halogens as you have. And of course, uh, Point electron density away from this ring is not necessarily going to stabilize it and lead to attacking. So the same the same reason that this was stabilized with base is kind of the same reason why it's destabilized with acid. So uh, please note though as we do this aldehydes will readily oxidize to carboxylic acids in these presence of halogens. So, so it's not really a particularly good one to use with uh, aldehydes. Okay, that's probably where we're going to end for today. We're going to look at on Friday the alpha bromination of acids which is often known as the hell rohard zabinsky reaction, the HEC. And then we'll get into aldol condensation. So hopefully this has made somewhat sense, useful. Like, please subscribe, please learn some stuff. That's all I can hope really. Have a good day.